Fuzz testing is a testing method that automatically injects invalid, malformed, or unexpected inputs into your system to reveal potential vulnerabilities. In this example, we'll use the very popular resource, Big List of Naughty Strings, to inject data into a Postman request using the collection runner. Let's load up our example request. It's a post call to HTTP bin. And if we look under the body tab, you can see a property called input and a variable called naughty value. This is an undefined value. This is an undefined variable at this point in time until we pair it with data that will pass through from an external data file. Let's look at the documentation to see what we need to do to get this started. The first thing is that we'll save the big list of naughty strings as a local JSON file, and then we'll run the collection using the runner. Let's take a look at the big list of naughty strings. You can see that it's an array of objects, and each object has a property called naughty value, and Postman will be accepting naughty value variable name, and then just subbing in whatever value is here. So empty string, undefined string, undef string, and so on. Let's right click on this page and save as a local file called naughty strings. And we'll go back to Postman. The next thing we'll do is run the collection using the runner along with that local data file we just saved to loop through all those different scenarios. So let's go back to our collection and the options menu and select run collection. You can see there's only one request in this collection, but we expect to run this API call many times using different sample data. And on the right side, we'll take a look at the configuration. Under data, we'll select our file, naughtystrings.json, and Postman's attached it here. Let's take a preview to see what it looks like. So this is how Postman's gonna interpret the data in that data file. There will be a property naughty value, and everything in this column can be referred to by variable name naughty value. Postman will iterate through empty string, undefined string, and so on and so forth, all the way down. Let's X out of here. We can see that there's 504 iterations, which means there's 504 objects in that array, and 504 test scenarios of potentially invalid data. There's some more advanced settings here, like, for example, the default is that save responses will be unchecked, but if I wanted to inspect those responses, I would click check here in a few more other advanced settings. So let's leave it as is and run our collection with that attached external data file. So here's the runner um, running through all of the iterations. So it keeps running that same example request, but pairing it with different types of data. And you can see that I did have one test that was written, status code is 200, and so far everything's passing. All right, so Postman is done. We fast forwarded through that. Um, it looks like we had only passed tests, but if we didn't properly error handle or we didn't anticipate a certain type of data, we could filter on failed tests to see what happened there. And if you're not sure, did I do that correctly, is what is Postman actually passing through and reading? you can select a specific iteration and drill down into the request and response details. Remember, if you did not check save response, you probably won't have the full response details here. Um, and I believe there is a slight bug right now. So if I look under request body, it's just reading through naughty value. It's referencing that variable, but not substituting in that value. Um, but if you ever are concerned about like, what is Postman actually sending? I'd like to go to the console in the bottom left and you can see all of those requests that were just running, you can inspect the raw details there. So let's collapse some of these. I believe we sent it in the request body and you can see that the input here, here's the value that Postman was substituting in. Looks like there's some ASCII characters. And then if we go to the next one and expand request body, looks like there's some emojis. So if you didn't account for emojis and your system doesn't handle emojis, we'll have a real problem there. So that's how you can do fuzz testing and simulate a ton of scenarios at the click of a button for potentially invalid or undefined inputs.